Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modelling and the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy, and today I'm just going to give you a quick what's in the box kit review on a model that turned up a couple of days ago called the SDKFZ 232 Chevera Panzer Spaff Wagon 8 Rad in Africa Corpse Coloured. This, as you can see, is uh, a Tamiya model and it's produced in the 135 scale. Now, this uh, turned up in a delivery of random models last week, and there is actually a um, opening of 14 kits in my YouTube library, which I'll put a, um, a link into, in case you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, this actually is the last part of a um, diorama that I'm hoping to produce in about a year, around a year's time, maybe when um, I get a little bit of a bit, a bit, a little bit better skilled at this uh, modelling process. And um, this was actually an intention that I had initially before I started throwing together Spitfires really quickly. And it's actually based on a, another model which you might be familiar with, which I did a what's in the box review for a few days ago. Link in the link in the description box for my AFV Club Rommel's Mammoth DAC AEC command car. Now, as you can see on the artwork for here, you've actually got several vehicles which are actually um, present. One of them here being the SD, SDKFZ 232, or as best as I can identify it anyway. We also have what I've identified as two Horsch KFZ 15s. And in the background here, we have another Horsch, but this one is the KFZ 70. We also have flying circling above a Fajla Stork. So what I thought would be interesting would be basically to try and recreate this artwork as a diorama. Kind of makes sense to me. I've actually got a Rommel and I've also got some Africa Core guys as well, which I can add. So there's quite a few models that would be used to, to actually construct this diorama. So anyway, let's cut to the chase and do a quick uh, kit review on this. As you can see, this uh, cost me 37.79. Came off eBay from a reputable dealer who i'm assuming has also has a shop as well which is nice so i'm just going to put this uh, box out of the way and we'll have a look at what's inside and um, as per my aircraft reviews i do like to read the history out so if you bear with me for a couple of minutes we'll just go go through the details the german army was prohibited from developing armored armored vehicles after their defeat in world war one but in the late 1920s, they secretly approached several companies to develop prototypes of a heavy armoured car. Eight and ten wheeled armoured cars with good performance were developed. But the Great Depression put these plans on hold. Then at the beginning of 1934, Bussing Nag was again asked to create an eight wheeled heavy armoured car and a prototype was ready by the end of the year. The simple yet robust chassis featured an eight wheel independent suspension with large leaf springs, eight wheel drive, eight-wheel steering and driver positions at both the front and rear. Ooh, that's interesting. The rear-mounted 150 horsepower L8V liquid-cooled gasoline engine gave the vehicle a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour. That's pretty quick. And it was matched with a centrally mounted transmission with three forward and three reverse gears. A crew of four was housed in an angular body designed by Deutsche Werk and a turret with a KWK 30 20 millimeter cannon and an MG34 machine gun was fitted. At 14.5 millimeters, armor protection was light, so extra frontal armor plates were added during production. Production of both the standard SDKFZ-231 and radio-equipped SDKFZ-232 began in late 1936, and a total of about 600 were produced by 1943. The SDKFZ-232 was equipped with a FU-11 radio and featured a large frame type antenna mounted on the body. These eight-wheeled armoured cars were developed by, sorry, deployed to armoured reconnaissance battalions to panzer divisions and served as the eyes of the German army from Europe and North Africa to the Russian front. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the instructions. I'm only going to do a quick, quick go through of these because well, they're not that interesting. <laughs> so here we have um, basically just step one, which is a bunch of suspension things. And then we're going to move on to step two, which is the under part of the chassis, and I think the axle and possibly part of the engine or the uh, gearbox. Put the doors on, put the suspension on in section three. 
Section four is the, I forget what you call these. It's, it's a suspension basically and more parts of that. And eventually you're gonna add all four of those in section five to the chassis. Section six, we're gonna start adding some small parts, including you know, bumpers and grills and various pipes and odds and sods. Then in section seven, we're gonna put the front right fender together. So these are the, um, well, the fenders that go over the wheels, basically, I suppose. Pretty obvious, really. Uh, section 8, we're going to do the rear ones. Section 9, we're going to attach the upper hull and start attack attack attaching some other bits and pops. Section 10, attach the fenders. And then 11, 12 and 13 is regarding wheels. 14 is regarding some extra small parts. And then uh, 15, we're going to attack a bit of photo etch by the look of it. Number 16, it's starting to come together with the... Um, Front mounted uh, jerry can holder. We've got some ammo boxes and other boxes to do in 17. 18 is putting a load more small parts together, including this rather interesting looking uh, tow rope here. 19 is the um, the turret with the 20 millimeter cannon and the MG32, 34, I can't quite remember. And then we're gonna start doing a couple of guys that come with it. Um, figure painting is, well, from when I've done this in the past, it was not a strong point, so I'm kind of a bit worried about doing this, but this is going to be, you know, six months down the road, so I'm not going to be building this anytime soon. And then we're going to put the antenna on the top. So that's that part out of the way. Then we have a rather nice um, instruction sheet for painting and marking. Shame it's not in colour, but you know, that's quite a nice design we've got there with some uh, camouflage on it. Yeah, that's okay. A few more instructions on... Basically, this is uh, detailing the um, various companies and battalions that it would have served in, and perhaps their different colours. We've got the standard Tamiya Tech Tips, which is useful for novice muppets like myself. We've got a nice uh, decal sheet with some um, added crew art, I think, this one. This one says Seidlitz, which is a town in Germany, or a city in Germany. I think it's also a, a division as well. Seidlitz division seems to ring a bell. Pick me up on that if you want. I'm not quite sure what this is. I think it says Hero B. Hordendorf. Or Bowendorf. Not quite sure. I've got a range of Luft, um, sorry, Wehrmacht, Wehrmacht um, number plates. And a whole lot of little things including some DAC symbols with the, with, the, with the naughty symbol still actually attached. So as we can see we've got... Oops, let's get this piece out first. Here we have the uh, central body of the hull, which is quite nicely detailed. I mean, I don't know, there could be, should there be more on this? It seems a bit flat here with nothing much going on. It's got some nice little hinges on it though. I'm not really that experienced with Tammy. I'm not quite sure whether this is a modern kit or one of their sort of older moulds. Fill me in if you like. I probably should have found out when this was first produced. I apologise for that. Then we have this one, which has got the upper hull. It's got one of our crew members. Obviously, this is the um, frame-mounted ra radio a a radio antenna. We've got some little doors. We've got a bit of the um, turret. Uh, some some of the hatches for the turret and the um, body. Again, it all looks quite nice. It's I don't know. It it just seems a bit bland. It seems a bit bland. Um, what do you think? It seems just a bit sort of uninteresting. The, the hull. It seems to me there should be some more. Some more nuts and bolts and what not, not, not going on, but hmm, don't know. Looks like our guy's got a berry on as well, which is quite interesting. Don't see that very often. Maybe he stole it off a Frenchman. On this um, sprue, we've got the wheels, obviously. We've got a whole load of uh, bits of suspension. Uh, these are the inner parts of the wheels, obviously, that go in here. I've got some more sort of mechanical looking hurdy gurdies. On this section, we have got some canvas bags and a canvas roll. We've got this nice uh, metal tow rope, I imagine. We've got some um, headlamps, some tools. I think these these are light pods, so these are we've got a little light on the on the top of a stick. We've got some more hatches. Not sure what they are, but they look quite interesting. I think this is an exhaust manifold. Mm, not sure what these parts are. Again, we've got some more crates here as well with some lids. 
Yeah, it all looks it all looks quite nice. We've got some helmets for the crew, a bucket, the standard bucket. I seem to recall I've done a few 135s in the past, and I seem to remember practically every time of your kit you get, they give you a bucket. And here we have the uh, front and rear fenders. This is part of the um, jerry can storage mounting at the front. Got the radiator, some jerry cans. I think these again are part of the fenders. Not exactly 100% certain. But it all looks it all looks quite nice. I mean, it it looks complicated compared to some of the Spitfires I've done, but it doesn't look anywhere near as complicated as this uh, DAC AAC armoured command car. So obviously I think maybe this will be, you know, one of the mid models that I do when I come to assemble this uh, mad diorama in six to 12 months time. Uh, this is the last sprue. Again, we've got another two crew members here. We've got this guy who is obviously sitting, the commander sitting in the, um, in the turret, I imagine. Got some more jerry cans, some more boxes, some holsters for pistols. I think we've got some goggles here. More tools, more boxes, more tools, ammunition cans. Yeah, it all looks pretty good. I'm not overly familiar at the moment with how well detailing has progressed on um, figures. But I imagine that if you paint these quite well, this, this detailing should look quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's quite nice. And here we've got some photo etch part. We've got a metal uh, cannon here. Not exactly certain what these part, parts are, obviously, but it's nice to have them. It's kind of nicely presented as well. I mean, you can't argue with that, I suppose, can you? And that's basically it. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple more um, videos related to this subject because like i say i have actually got all the component parts now including a 135 faisal stalk um, i'm going to do one a day i think if i can i'm at work at the moment so i can't really do an awful lot of um youtubing so tune me in tune in tomorrow and i've actually got two different versions of this horse kfz and i've got quite an interesting um kfz 70 horse as well which is more of an anti-aircraft variant it's quite a nice one, I think. And like I say, we'll do that. So we've got another one, two, three, four vehicles to review. You've already done this one. And then I've got a bunch of um, Africa Corps, crew, uh, Africa Corps soldiers as well. So we'll have a look at them, including, including Mr. Rommel here. So anyway, yeah. Hope you enjoyed my little video. Um, questions and suggestions are always welcome. Uh, I do like engaging with you guys in the um, comments box, but I am at work at the moment. I do a 12 hour shift. I work nights. I'm a bit tired, so I don't I'm, I won't be answering particularly quickly. So I apologize for that. Uh, like I said, more videos to come. Uh, please like and subscribe and join me for my model building ride. Be seeing you.